Okay, let's start talking about stoichiometry. I think in chemistry, stoichiometry would be my favorite uh, subject. Not that it's real hard, but that it's, it's, uh, that it's straightforward, it's step-by-step, -step, it's methodical, and I tend to like that kind of thing. So what we want to do uh, in this Scribblecast is just learn the basics of stoichiometry and then maybe just solve some basic uh, stoic questions. We'll get on to gravimetric solution and gas sto stoichiometry in, uh, we'll do each of one of those separate in uh, subsequent Scribblecasts. So, what is stoichiometry? Well, stoichiometry involves calculating quantities of a reactant or a product in a chemical reaction. So if I have a certain amount of reactant, I should be able to, by stoichiometry, determine how much product I'm going to get in the end. Or if I get a certain product, I can tell how much reactant I could have started with. Or I could, if I know a certain amount of reactant, determine how much of another reactant I need in order to have a full uh, reaction happen. So stoichiometry is all about figuring out amounts given a chemical reaction. So as I say here, it's only done on chemical reactions. If I'm just looking at a gas or a solution and wanting to find out information about that, I don't do stoichiometry. It's only reserved for reactions. Now one analogy that I came up with a few years ago Okay, maybe 25 years ago, uh, was something called the river. And since I've done used this with stoichiometry, it, it seems to help students uh, figure out uh, stoichiometry or, or at least learn the process a little bit easier than just doing it without any kind of analogy. Basically, in stoichiometry, um, we'll be given some information and we'll be asked other information. And always there's a step that you have to go through, or maybe a number of steps, that you should go through in order to go from one given information to an asked information or requested information. So what happens is um, they might give you an amount in grams of a substance of a reactant. And maybe they say, okay, a reaction happens, and then how much grams or what weight of product would I get out in the end? Okay, that might be a, a typical kind of question. They might ask for grams of this or, or give you grams of this and ask for grams of something else. If they do that, then there's going to be some steps that you have to go through in order to solve it. First, and I've got the steps written down here on this river, it says that you need to write a balanced chemical equation that's always key, it's always number one. Make sure you do that first. Then determine what information you're given, determine what information you are asked for, and then determine how many steps it's going to take you to get there. And lastly, of course, complete the steps. So like in the one that I uh, used to start with, maybe if I was given grams of something, and I was asked to find grams of something else, these would be the steps that I would have to go through. My little river here is set up in, in uh, uh, it has six, or I guess eight towns in it. Uh, one of them is called Solidsville, <laughs> and that's where grams would be, of course. Another one, Liquidsville, and so if I have a volume or if I have a molarity of something, that's, that's where I would be living. Or I have another town called Gasville, and so that's if I have a pressure, volume, temperature, that kind of information about something, that's where I would start. Now, if I'm wanting, this is the given side, if I want to find out something about asked, every time I'm given information, I always have to convert that, or I have to travel along this road to a place called Molesville. In other words, I have to convert whatever I've been given into moles. I have to do that first. Okay? Well, I guess I write a balance equation first. Then I do this. Then I have to get across the river. So there's a river, and I can't fly across from one place to another place. I can't jump the river. Notice the sharks lying in wait. They're river sharks for you. I have to go through moles. So always my first step is to get moles. 
Second step is to use the mole ratio to get across the river above those river sharks. And then my last step will be, so once I get across the river, I'm in Molesdale, then my last step will be, depending on what they ask, uh, they might ask for grams, so I might have to do this. They might ask for some liquid information, so I might have to go this way. Or they might ask for some gas information, so I'd have to go that way. So whatever I'm given, I might start in one of these three towns here. I guess sometimes they might have me start in Molesville too. So I could start anywhere there, and then I would have to follow the steps. If I started in, in Solidsville, my first step would be to convert the grams using a molar mass into moles. Okay, that would get me to Molesdale or Molesville. Then I'd have to use a mole ratio to get across the river. That's step two. Then I would be in Molesdale. And the third step, depending on where I have to go, would be, um, say I have to go to grams up here, I would have to convert the moles that I have from Molesdale into grams using some kind of formula. Notice in this river, each one of the roads has a formula that you can use on it. So if I start in grams, I'm going to use this formula to get me to moles. If I start in liquid, I'm going to use this formula here to get me into moles. If I start with gas, I'm going to use this formula to get me to moles. So regardless of what they give me, I'm going moles first. Then a balanced chemical reaction, I use mole ratio to get across the river and then use one of those formulas there to get the information that I need on the other side. So that's sort of the gist of the river. I know it's sort of a, I explained it long-windedly, but uh, that's sort of the gist of any stoichiometry. And if you understand what you're given and what you're asked, the river can help you identify those steps that you need to perform in order to um, come up with your answer. So, first off, uh, uh, let's just go through each one of these steps. <clears throat> Determine a balanced chemical equation. So, for, in, for instance, here I've got a chemical equation. And this chemical equation says I have one molecule of sugar. It'll react with six. Oh, I guess I didn't balance it. I'll bet that this should be a six, though, and a six, and a six, <laughs> once it's balanced. One molecule of sugar will react with six molecules of oxygen, to produce six molecules of carbon dioxide and six molecules of water. And this could be uh, uh, molecules, it could be um, a dozen molecules, uh, um, anything. Really, usually we use the word mole there. So one mole of, of sugar will react with six moles of oxygen to produce six moles of carbon dioxide and six moles of water. This is my first step. I don't have to worry about all of this stuff down here. don't have to worry about that. I just have to worry about my chemical reaction. Notice that, oh, here I have my moles down there. Notice that I cannot say one gram of sugar reacts with six grams of oxygen. Can't say that. I cannot compare grams, to gra grams of sugar to grams of oxygen. Can't do it. I have to compare moles of one to moles of another, okay? And that's like in the river, I can't jump from grams here to grams over there. I gotta go through, or I have to go through moles. Okay, so write a balanced equation. And we've already had a scribble cast. You're good at those. Next is to determine what you're given and what you're asked. Here's a question. Find the moles of magnesium. Okay, where's magnesium? Here's, my, oh, that's magnesium chloride. Here's magnesium right there. Find the moles of magnesium, so I could put an N is equal to question mark here. Find the moles of magnesium required to produce 7.20 moles of hydrogen gas. Here's hydrogen gas over here, 7.20 moles of hydrogen gas. So there I've identify, identified the information that is given and the information that is asked. So on my river, I could then, here's where I'm starting, there's where I'm ending, and I could perform whatever steps I need to in order to do that. I guess on this one, I didn't balance the equation. I probably should do that uh, just quickly. Um, I think that does it.
Yeah. Okay, so I have a balanced chemical equation. I need to balance those. <coughs> Write down what I'm given, what I'm asked. Then determine how many steps it's going to take me. So in this particular question, I was given 7.2 moles. I was asked to find the moles of magnesium. So when I look at my river down here, I know it's small. You may want to print one of these off. Uh, uh, there should be one available online in Module 3. Just look for the river handout. So I'm given a number of moles right here. I'm given moles of hydrogen. So I'm not starting in solid, liquid, or gasville. I'm starting right here in molesville. So I'm starting with an amount of moles, and they're asking for a number of moles. So that's where I'm ending. So really, this question here is only a one-stepper. So to determine the number of steps, this one is only going to require one step. Because I'm given moles, I'm asked for moles, one step. Okay. The next step is to actually complete, <laughs> complete those steps, so to actually do the step. So the step that I'm going to do is I'm going to convert moles of hydrogen to moles of magnesium. Okay, now in order to do the ratio and proportion or this mole ratio uh, step, uh, what we do is we use something very similar to what we did with the um, uh, dimensional ana analysis, is we write down what we're given. So we're given 7.20 moles of um, hydrogen. And then I'm going to multiply it by a ratio just like we did with dimensional analysis. And the ratio that I'm going to use will be the numbers or the coefficients that I have from my balanced chemical reaction. See if those numbers aren't in there properly, it's going to mess me up. Maybe not in this question, but other questions it may. Okay, so here I have one mole of hydrogen um, is produced from one mole of magnesium. So right here, one mole of magnesium produces one mole of hydrogen. So it's a one-to-one -one relationship. So to complete the step then, uh, moles of hydrogen cancel out. So 7.20 times 1 divided by 1, uh, the moles of magnesium that will be produced are 7.20 moles. Okay, so there I just went through quickly um, the steps that you'll use with all stoichiometry. So you first get a balanced chemical equation, right here, balanced chemical equation. Determine what they're given you and what you're asked. Then determine the number of steps that you have to complete and go ahead and complete them. In further Scribblecast, I'm going to go through each, each, each kind of pathway that we could, we could do here. We might start you here, and we might end you there. So I'd have to do one step to get me to moles, second step to get across the river, third step to get from molesdale to gasdale. Or I might start you here at liquid and have you wind up here at solid. So again, one step to get you to moles, another step to get you across the river, and a third step to get you back up to uh, solids. So that's, that's sort of what stoichiometry will entail, and uh, look for more examples in the future Scribblecast.